Cool. So good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we'll start now this um, second lecture on um, on our model of deep learning for artificial intelligence. So this first lecture is going to be going to cover the perspective. So I'll start sharing the screen first and we'll go through these slides. Great. So uh, you got it now. So first I will acknowledge Santiago Pascual and Kay McGuinness for helping in setting up this, uh, this lecture and actually the other ones that we'll cover today because today we're gonna cover four models. And actually, if you wanna watch like some of our previous lectures on top, you can just go and see those videos that we have publicly available. So what I will do uh, for this topic first, I will uh, first explain how by combining the concepts of regression and classification, we can solve a, a simple problem which is called binary classification. Binary classification is a, a task in which we want to decide between, between two classes, right? Between cats or dogs, for example, or actually we'll, I think we're gonna be working with class zero or class one or cats and dogs. And we're going to solve this task in a very step-by-step -step manner. So first, I will explain how linear regression can help in that. Then I will uh, combine it in something called logistic regression. I will explain uh, what logistic regression means and then how we can solve a classification problem by combining logistic regression and something called the decision threshold. Then once these problems have been defined, later I will explain like the perception, which is the, the goal of this talk and explain how this very simple architecture can be used to solve this problem. Let's start with linear regression. So as you saw in the previous um, lecture, linear regression will be like probably the, the most basic task in machine learning in which what we have is some input variable. In this case, it's 1D. You already saw it from the previous lecture and some training samples. You have here these points in, in green. And what we want to do is estimate the parameters of a line. So that would be the slope and the bias so that um, whenever we have any X value, we can map it into the predicted labels. Why? following a linear rule, okay? So training this kind of model would be learning or estimating the parameters, in this case, W and B. So it would be like two parameters, two scalars in this very, very simple example. So if you wanna do that uh, coding, because you will soon be using uh, coding PyTorch for this task, you can just basically do it with a very simple uh, called linear, a linear uh, layer in which you will need in this case, this example has like, what if what if my input has one, two, three dimensions, this example, so here you the dimension of the input and then at the output, in this case will be like only one single value, why? So one dimension. These are the, the things that you will be doing uh, further in the course, right? So this part has a, a way to later estimate the parameters that we'll cover later. So nothing new now, or not, not much new. I already explained the idea of linear regression from the previous lecture when I was talking about the prices of, of houses, if you remember. Okay, now how can we, uh, let's assume that we can solve that, that we can solve uh, linear regression from our data, but let's see how can we use that um, to move it into, to solve a classification problem. So let's follow the example. Imagine that what we have is a set of images of cats and dogs, actually puppies and kitchens, and that somehow, magically, we have a feature extractor that maps each of these images, which will be like 2D in the sense of space, plus 3D in the sense of RGB, uh, pixels of the, uh, the set of three arrays of 2D arrays, but somehow you do some magic there that we will cover in the future so that it maps each of the, this image into an axis. Okay, we will call it X later. 
in such a way that notice that there's so if we follow this axis there is an order in which in the sense that there's a cat 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 dog dog right so these images that they were in this representation shuffled right in this 2d projection that i put on the slides by chance um it would be great if we had some magic tool that would map them into a way that if we if each of each of the image was a scalar or a 1d number that the order of this color uh, would leave at one side the cats and the dogs on the other side that would be awesome right that would be great and actually that's basically what the million networks do in the end okay normally they don't they don't map into a 1d that's super simple that's great to do the 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 example but okay nothing prevents you from doing that you, you can try to you can try to map images of cats and dogs into a single scholar and see if, if if you can if you can solve that so in future lectures we will deal with this magic here but not today okay now let's assume that we have that and that we have this mapping okay the idea is, again is like more or less the value that you have here mapped it's of the cats and the dog this will be x uh, was was deleted but there should be an x here Okay, now, next step. Now, on our X representation uh, that was removed, um, I think I, I will add it because it's gonna help. So we have some linear regression, regression model that will um, map them in a following way. Just notice what's happening there with the linear regression. What's happening here now is that I'm I'm uh, moving, or I'm, I'm pro sorry, projecting all the cats uh, into this, so below zero, and in, and in the way like all the dogs, they are in a over zero. So you can think that linear re regression is like a, a linear projection. Okay, so actually here it, we can think that it's something like 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 this, right? That it's 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 kind of a shifting. The, the data of this data on, on this side. So it's kind of moving uh, the, the cats uh, below zero. And that's something that you, you can do without in regression with the, with the slope and all that, you, you, can, you can play with it, with that. So, and that's something that you already know how to do, or that's what I explained earlier. But remember the, the headline that you have on top that says, okay, here what we want to do is to go from regression to classification, because now what I have is like in one side of let's say in the, in the sign negative values of our my scalar now it's called a i changed uh, from x to a negative values correspond to cats positive values correspond to dogs but i still want to solve a classification problem classification problem it's 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 not let's say it's not simply uh, higher or lower than some value I, I want at the end some label for cats and for dogs in a numerical way because we are trying to encode everything in a numerical way okay so um, I think that's the, the right, the wrong question. Um, okay, sorry, I made the problem editing. So how can we, oh no, no, it's correct. How can we, um, from these values that we, you have here, the output of the linear regression, how could we uh, change them in such a way that the outputs will be zero? So that we, that we would map the cats into a zero value and the dogs into a one value. So now we want to assign a numerical value to the cats and the, to the dogs, which is going to be the class. Class zero for cats and class one, so value one for dogs. How, what, what function do you know that would allow you to do this, this mapping? And now it's turn for you to answer on the, on the chat. So what function do you know? Okay, thank you. So there a, was a prompt answer that says the step function could do that. And, if you have done especially telecommunication engineering, you have done a, quite a lot of that, right? This is the step function. Or oh, maybe you have known it as the heavy side function. But basically what it does is like it maps all negative values to zero, all positive values to one. So that's great because this step function allows us to um, map um, from zero to, to one. This reasoning that I have done in 1D 
normally, if you if you read the textbooks, you see it on 2D, which I think it's a bit harder to understand, but it's exactly the same story. So now imagine that your input data, your X is not one dimensional, but it's two dimensionals. I think the other day we talked about the weight and the and the, and the age, right, of the of the animal, and we thought that said okay, maybe somehow if you can draw a linear a line between the samples, it will be possible to to manage to uh, classify between cats and dogs. Again, that's the same story. Now in a 2D space, you can think about the 2D uh, slope or heavy side, and and that's what you are going to be solving. You if you can if you can uh, orientate the slope in in the right way, or actually orientate the data in the in the way that the slope a uh, 2D uh, yeah 2D slope will map between zero and one. You you're gonna be solving again the the class the class problem of mapping in this case would be uh, cats into zeros and dogs into ones. Cool. So this is great. Um, if we had the heavy side function that we can solve this classification problem, but actually we are not going to be uh, using the heavy side function. So um, actually, uh, later in the next module, you will see that that, that this heavy side function has a problem, which is that it's flat, okay, in this in this. Uh, well, in almost uh, it, so there, it's flat in most of its uh, range, right? And most of its values, and actually it's not derivative around zero. And this is the problem because later in the next lecture you see that when we build uh, deep neural networks, we're going to be running an algorithm called backpropagation that we will uh, would require computing the derivative of all the functions in the network. So this is one of the reasons why the heavy side function we will not be able to use it in our case, okay? We can use it, of course, uh, in when you are not trying to do backpropagation, and it's kind of the, the, the obvious thing to do, but we will not, it's not going to be suitable for our uh, problems. In our case, what we are going to be doing is using an kind of a, a soft approximation of the uh, heavy side function, so we'll still be trying to map up our values between zero and one, but we're going to be using something called the sigmoid function that probably maybe you have, you know about it already. And if not, I'm defining it here. It's a value, the function that goes between zero and one, it's centered uh, around zero, like the heavy side step function. And this is its formulation, okay? This is sigmoid function, and we're gonna be using it uh, quite a lot when, especially when solving uh, trying to solve classification problems uh, combined with a, with a re regression or linear regression uh, model. This same reasoning that here I applied in 2D input signals, you can apply it to 2D, right? So here, if your feature uh, input features, they were 2D, here I have drawn, or actually Santi, oops, draw uh, this 2D sigmoid that you can think that it's mapping all the values which are over here into the red class and all the uh, values on this area into uh, the zero value, the zero class. And actually, in you, one of your first labs you will be doing is uh, learning the parameters of this sigmoid so that, that it can solve a classification problem starting from a logistic regression. Okay, so here we have the logistic regression that it's, uh, that it's mapping. Something that is important is that uh, this logistic regression, it tends to zero, it tends to one, but it never gets there, okay? So it's not, it's not here, these values are not exactly one, and this slope here is not exactly, it's not exactly zero, so there's there's some slope always. It's continuous, the most of the slope is here, and actually when we are training our networks, you will see that, we, that it's, they will train well if we are in this area, where in this area it looks, it kind of acts kind of a linear, uh, function, but um, the, what it's interesting is that it's, it never gets zero, but there's always some, there's always some slope. And it never gets to one, and there is always some slope. So it can always provide gradients when training. If you want to do that with uh, PyTorch, also you will do this in, in one of the labs. You, what you will be doing is you'll be um, having first a linear layer, that will be the linear regression, and on top you will add a sigmoid uh, activation. 
And now notice that the outputs uh, are um, beach bounded between zero and one. Next step, as this is not exactly reaching zero or one, how can we take the final step to make it like class zero or class one? So that's kind of easy-ish to do. Um, we can just directly set a threshold, right? So when we have our sigmoid values, we can take a decision, okay, class one will be all values that, for example, that in the sigmoid, uh, they are over 0 0.5. That's kind of the, you would say that all the samples which 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 are, are located here that will map into the sigmoid, into this mapping, you say this is going to be class one. And all the samples that you have here, that you if you map them, into the sigmoid, they would match over here. You said all the values under the threshold, below the threshold, they are class zero. And now that you set the threshold, that now that you set the threshold, is the moment in which we are really uh, signing a class label uh, after the sigmoid. So in, in the end, it's like doing the what we were doing with the step function, but uh, now we make it softer, or we, we apply a soft solution that will allow us later to compute gradients and estimate the parameters of, of our, you know, in this case, of our linear uh, project, projection. So in the end, uh, you'll see that when we train your networks, we are actually uh, estimating these Ws and, and this D. There is, oh, actually, I I said that we can set the threshold to 0 0.5, but actually, actually that's a convention. It's totally up to you, right? So the decision threshold can be 0 0.5, but it can be whatever you want. You can you can you can move it to whatever um, value you want as a threshold. Just take into account that if you set a, a higher uh, threshold, what will happen is that your precision metric will increase. The precision is a metric that says like which which is the rate or the percentage of uh, detections of, of of let's say if you are trying to detect uh, dogs so the the if you want to be to make sure that when you detect the dog it's actually a dog you don't want a false false positive you you it's it's a good idea to have a, a, a high threshold but uh, on the other hand if your threshold is lower then maybe mm, you will get like all the all the dogs that you had before, but maybe some cats will also be now detected as as, as dogs. But your re, so your precision will decrease, but the recall will increase. So recall means like uh, what rate, what percentage of the of the samples that you wanted to detect, say of all the dogs you wanted to detect, which percentage did you actually detect? Yeah, if you if you found all of them or, or you 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 miss some of them. So high recall means that um, you don't miss many of them. And there's a trade-off, right? So if you increase the, the, the decision threshold, you're going to be harder to decide. It's going to be harder to decide uh, that that's a dog. You must be, you're going to be more confident. But then maybe you, you might be leaving some dogs out. So maybe then your, your recall may, may decrease. So that's a, a classic uh, trade-off in machine learning on the decision thresholds. And it's something that in the end, you 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 will be able to, to decide. So in case you never heard about um, all these uh, problems of how to deal with uh, precision recall, I suggest that you look at this um, this chart, right? In which this would be like the, the ground proof, right? Like if you say uh, you are not pregnant, so it is a it is a, a man, so he cannot be pregnant. So if the doctor says it's true negative, so that's a prediction that will be correct. It's a true negative. But if the doctor says that you are pregnant as it's a man, the prediction here is wrong. So that's going to be a false positive. And on the other hand, if you see this lady who is obviously pregnant and the doctor says that you are not pregnant, uh, then so the lady is pregnant. But the, if the prediction is that it's not pregnant, then that becomes a false negative. And on the other hand, uh, if the doctor says you're pregnant, which is correct, that would be a true positive, okay? So this kind of trade-off and, and concepts are quite common in machine learning. So now that I presented the problems, uh, how you can solve a binary classification problem like 
combining concepts of, of regression, linear logistic regressions and, and decision threshold. Let's see how the perception, which is going to be the basic unit we'll be working on, uh, can manage them, can, can handle uh, this task that I just introduced. So let's look at the architecture. What does a perception look like? So the perception is actually the basic unit of deep neural networks, and it can be seen as an analogy of a biological neuron. So biological neurons, what they do is they fire an impulse once the sum or the, the yeah, sum of all the inputs is over a threshold. So it has some stimulus, uh, they trigger. Okay, it's kind of a kind of a, seat, a switch. And this, so this analogy of a biological neuron, that's what inspires the perception that we're going to be uh, looking at, which was uh, proposed by Rosenblatt in 1958. So how does it work? We're going to have an input. In this case, we have an input of dimension three and the corresponding weights. In addition, a bias. Finally, an activation function, and that's going to be the output of the perception. So this, this is a perception. That's the basic unit that, uh, or the most generic um, scheme for a perception. The perception, the behavior of the perception is modeled by the weights that we have here and the bias. So these values are the values that we are going to be estimating when we train our models. Notice that after this first stage, before the activation function, what we have is a linear combination of the input. Here it's a vectorial notation, so the weights multiplied by the vector plus uh, a bias. Okay, so this, this, uh, I guess that you can already see that it's in the end. This is a linear. Uh, this can this part of the model solves a can think that it's solving a linear regression. Later, there's another model called activation function that is going to introduce some nonlinearity in general, and that's one kind of what makes interesting connecting uh, layers of perception. You'll see that we're going to be uh, using many perceptions in your network, and we are going to organize them on stacks of layers and the idea of of having stacks of layers it's connecting um, or combining the behavior of of this linear part of the perception with this part that in general it will not be linear the perception can be used to solve both regression or classification problems and actually it kind of depends on what we put here in the activation function so for example imagine that the activation function is the identity, which which is which is equivalent to saying that there's no activation function. In this case, the linear combination that we have at this point, if this is just the identity, it's also the output. So the output in this case it's a it's a linear regression. So in this in this scheme that you're seeing now, the perceptron is behaving as a linear regression. So this same architecture addressing this task of linear regression. What if now uh, we don't have an identity as an activation function, but now we put as an activation function a sigmoid? Now, in this case, the output actually it will match the, the formulation of the logistic regression. So now our perception is solving a logistic regression problem. And as you saw in the previous slides, when we do logistic regression, is because later on. Uh, we will actually, so we, we are trying to solve in the end a classification problem. We are trying that our, the output of our perceptron uh, go to zero or to one. That's, what, that's why we introduce the sigmoid activation functions uh, at the output. In this case, if you, you have this, uh, this um, setup, just notice that before the activation function, this uh, linear combination, that's what we are going to call the logits. It's a, a, a term that we're going to be using also quite often. Of course, as I just presented a few slides before, by setting, by having a, 
a sigmoid as an activation function, or actually there are some others, but say a sigmoid as an activation function and a threshold, we can solve binary classification problems with a single perceptron. Okay, so with a single perceptron, we can solve linear regression problems, logistic regression problems, and binary classification problems. And, and I, I noticed that actually the logistic regression is typically like the, 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 the step before solving a binary classification problem. So you, you, if you want, you can think that it's, it's the same one, the same task. When I, when I presented the architecture, I, there was a block that I called activation functions, and I uh, presented two activation functions so far, or, or one and a half if you want. Um, do you remember which activation function did I discuss so far for the perception? Can you write them on, on the chat? So with activation functions, okay. The sigmoid, right, for the logistics regression. Uh, okay, step function and sigmoid, cool, yeah. Actually, okay, I, I guess it, it's fine. I was, yeah, okay, that, that, that's fine. Um, I was actually more expecting like one, one activation function, which actually it's not activation function, when I was talking about the perception, was the identity, but I, I think it's good that it provides better your answers about uh, step function and sigmoid. So basically the, this, uh, these two activation functions. Then, oops, there might be um, other functions that I use in deep neural networks which are not uh, sigmoids or, or step function. And notice that a step function, in, in general, we will not be using it because it's not differentiable and that will prevent us from training the parameters as you will see later. Okay, so in general, uh, there are a range of functions that of course you can you can imagine any nonlinear function but some of them they are more interesting when uh, dealing with deep neural networks normally we will want uh, functions which are mostly smooth continuous differentiable fairly linear and that's why typically we have the sigmoid the tangent hyperbolic the hyperbolic tangent and the relu okay so actually the relu it means rectified linear unit and it's a function that you should, you're going to use it quite a lot because uh, what it has is a zero value uh, for negative inputs and for positive inputs, it will have just the identity as, a, as the output, okay? Um, one or two questions. What is the derivative of the ReLU based on this figure? Can, can you answer that also in the chat? Okay. So one is derivative of the, of the ReLU for which range of input values? Cool, yeah, for positive values, okay? For positive values, the slope function is, uh, this is, is one. And what about negative values? What's, what's the slope of the ReLU for negative values? Yeah, the answer is correct. Uh, so the, for negative values, the derivative is E0, so it's totally flat, so there's, there's no derivative, okay? And I know that earlier I was, uh, yeah, in zero we have a, a problem there, but I would say that in, in practice we, uh, we don't really care much about what's happening. You know, if you're mathematicians, I'm sure that you're very concerned, but in terms of engineering aspects, uh, just don't worry about that. Okay, it's, it's we, we basically we can, I guess that in implementation, I'm not sure what, what the implementations are doing there, but whether you put a one or a zero, it will not change much. The, uh, the output of the training process that we'll be interested on. But that's a good point. Like what happens in the in the in the zero when they put the zero. Okay. Um, here you have other popular activation functions. Um, there's this hard uh, sigma that it's linear near zero but then it gets zero uh, or flat, sorry, one uh, flat when you go uh, away from the origin. 
you have the liquid relu, which is it's kind of uh, popular. Um, the liquid relu is it's for positive values. It uh, has slope one, and for negative values, it's not zero, but it's not the slope is not as high as as one. It's just uh, there's a little bit of, of oops, there's a little bit of a slope, and you can decide which one it is. Then there's the hyperbolic tangent, uh, which it's kind of has a similar behavior as the sigmoid, sigmoid but in this case, it uh, moves between one and minus one. And this elo, it's more uh, exotic, I think. It is linear in this part, and it's not linear when you move uh, to the, onto negative values. And that's a kind of, basically, you'll be using, most of the time, you'll be using uh, relos, sigmoids, maybe tangent hyperbolics if your outputs of, the, of your model is between one and minus one. Okay, now I'll give you uh, some uh, small exercise to complete to do now, okay? Um, here, I'm, I would like you to consider that we have a binary classifier that we implement with a single neuron with only one perception, as like the ones that you have seen so far, and with two weights. Uh, one of the weights is 0 0.2 and the other one is 0 0.8. And also there's a bias, which it's a minus one. And we can see that you have a activation function to be the sigmoid. Then first, I would like you to draw a scheme of the model. Later, compute the output of the logistic regression for a given input. So here I'm giving you the, the input data for your model. And then finally, that you tell me that if we consider that the classification threshold is quite high, like 0 0.9, um, Tell me to which class does this sample 1.1 belong to, okay? So this will be, I would like you to do this now. And by the way, I will start the, re start the recording.